ఐ ఆమ్ వేలూరి రవికుమార్ డిస్ట్రిక్ట్ అండ్ సెషన్ జడ్జ్ రిటైర్డ్ నౌ గివింగ్ ఎ స్మాల్ బ్రీఫ్ ఆన్ ద ప్రిన్సిపల్ ఆఫ్ అబెట్మెంట్ అండర్ ఇండియన్ పెనల్ కోడ్ let us first see what is the meaning of the word abetment abetment has got three main words that is to say one is to instigate to instigate means to provoke a person or to make a other person get himself aggravated to commit an act act which is an offense to conspire means to discuss and come to a conclusion or a decision to do an act which he gives concurrence and support for it intentionally helping is another way of abetting that is the offender may need some assistance to complete the offense in in that process he gives help to him therefore the meaning of the word abetment under ipc is to instigate conspire or intentionally help now let us explain the abetment as defined under section 107 instigating one person to commit an offense engaging in a conspiracy to commit it that is to say an offense intentionally aiding a person to commit the offense in all these three stages the person who instigates or who conspires or who aids will be the person abetor therefore by a closer look it indicates abetor is not the person who actually commits the offense but he is the person who wishes the commission of offense for that he does everything from his side thereby he becomes the abetor now explanation is given under the section that is firstly aiding a public servant and second an offense is complete even if the person refuses to do let us analyze this part suppose a and b were there and decided to commit yet some offense in which a proposes a particular way of committing the offense but b after discussion decides that i will not do the offense then b remains as if he has not committed an offense but as far as a is concerned who has instigated and given support and insisted upon to do that he completes the offense of abetment therefore it is clear that in the case of an abetment the offense need not be committed but an assistance for committing offense itself constitutes an offense this is the speciality of abetment next if the person who is doing that act is unaware of the act which is committing and is offense and then his principal that is an employer or the person responsible for him will become 
the per, uh, abattoir and responsible for the offence and he will become liable. Further, another important point here is an abetment to an abattoir is also an offence. That means one person is committing the offence to the person who is committing offence is assisted by another person and that person is further given support by one another person and that person becomes an abattoir to the abattoir and he is also liable for the offence. That That is how the abutment is defined. Now coming to the section 108 says the abutter, a person who abets an offence, who abets either the commission of an offence or the commission of an act which would be an offence. If committed by a person capable by law of committing an offence with the same intention or knowledge as that of the abutter. So here you have to again closely look into and see an offence might have been committed or not committed is not relevant here. If the act would have been committed and if it becomes offence even if without committing the act abatement is complete. Further. If the person who is committing the offence has got knowledge or intention is not relevant with regard to the abattoir is concerned. If the person committing the offence is unaware of the consequences and is not intended to do that act but did it without knowledge or intention, still the person who abetted that offence remains as an abattoir and thereby comes under the offence of abatement. The word abattoir is further explained in the explana first explanation. The abatement of the illegal omission of an act may amount to an offence, although the abattoir may not himself be bound to do that act. You see, under Indian Penal Code, an offence constitutes an act as well as an omission. An illegal omission means a person which he ought not to have omitted but omitted with an intention thereby an offence occurs that becomes an illegal omission for committing an offence and the person who abets another for omitting that act will become abattoir and thereby becomes liable for abatement. The second explanation gives that to constitute the offence of abatement it is not necessary that the act abetted should be committed or that the effect requisite to constitute the offence should be caused. This we discussed earlier. The commission or non-commission will not absolve the liability of the abattoir. Now the third explanation says it is not necessary that the person abetted should be capable by law of committing an offence. So therefore if the person to whom you abattoir abetted is a minor or unsound mind or whatever it is a legal incapacity but commits or not commits an offence, the abatement is complete and it says that the person abetted should be capable of law committing an offence. The abattoir must be a competent person. The person committing the offence need not be competent that he should have the same guilty intention or not. Knowledge as that of the abattoir or any guilty intention or knowledge. Now coming to the fourth explanation, the abatement of an act of offence 
being an offence, the abetment of such an abetment is also an offence. So, in the starting of the topics, I explained that an abetment, abetment to the abettor is also an offence. Now, further explaining the word under explanation 5, it is not necessary to the commission of the offence abetment by conspiracy that the abettor should concert or give consent for the offence with the person who commits it. It is sufficient if he engages in the conspiracy in pursuance of which the offence is committed. Therefore, the participation in the conspiracy itself makes the person liable whether the offence is committed or not committed, whether finally he is aware of it or unaware of it, but mere participation in a conspiracy makes him liable. Now, let us see the illustrations. A instigates B to murder C. B refuses to do so but A is guilty of abetting B to commit the murder. That means, B refused, still A became liable. Now, the second illustration under IPC says, A intended to cause a theft to be committed, instigates B to take the property belonging to Z out of Z's position. A induces B to believe that the property belongs to A. B takes the property out of Z's position in good faith, believing it to be A's property. B acting under this misconception does not take dishonestly and therefore does not commit theft. But A is guilty of abetting theft and is liable to the same punishment as if B had committed the theft. See, the illustration clearly gives that the act of B is totally absolved of any liability. But the act which was instigated by A, he amounts to abetting the theft and he was made liable. The third illustration further in analyzes A instigates B to instigate C to murder Z. B accordingly instigates C to murder Z and C commits that offence in consequence of B's instigation. B is liable to be punished for his offence with the punishment of for murder and A as a instigated B to commit the offence, A is also liable for the same punishment. That is to say, an abettor, an abetment to the abettor is also an offence. The fourth illustration says, A concerts with B a plan for poisoning Z. It is agreed that A shall administer the poison. B then explains the plan to C, mentioning that a third person is to administer the poison, but without mentioning A's name. C agrees to procure the poison and procures and delivers it to B for the purpose of its being used in the manner explained, A administers the poison, Z dies. In consequence, here though A and C have not conspired together, yet C has been engaged in the conspiracy in persons of Z has been murdered. C has therefore committed the offence defined in this section and is liable to the punishment of murder. Here you, you can see the conspiracy, the link of conspiracy is complete by virtue of a, B and C. Here A spoke to B, then B spoke to C. B is the middle person connecting A and C. A and C never met together. They are totally unaware of it. But still, for the act of C resulting in the death of Z, A was made liable. Now, the general provisions with regard to the abetment, let us analyze. To constitute the offence of abetment, it is not necessary that the act abetted should be committed or that the effect should be caused. 
It is not necessary that the person abetted should be capable or should have same intention. It is not necessary that abetter should agree. Sufficient if he engages. When bound to do has not done it and an illegal omission is an abetment. When abetment of an offence is offence, the abetment of such an abetment is also an offence. Now difference between a common intention under section 34 and the abetment under section 107. In the case of common intention, it requires a closer association with actual commission of offence. With regard to the abetment, it is an instigation simpliciter, no closer involvement is necessary. In the case of a com common intention, the act should be committed. In the case of an abetment, act need not be committed. In the case of common intention, all persons should be capable of committing the offence. In the case of abetment, the person committing the offence need not be capable of it. In common intention, all persons should have common intention. The person Abetted may or may not have the same guilty intention and knowledge as that of the abetter. That is the difference. In the case of a common intention, presence is necessary. In the case of abetment, the presence is not necessary. Probable consequences or influence of the instigation, the same as act done. Avatar present when offence is committed, section 114. Whenever any person who is absent would be liable to be punished as an avatar, he is present when the act or offence for which he would be punishable in consequence of abetment is committed. He shall be deemed to have committed such act or offence. The different kinds of abetments act committed together with another which is probable consequence punishment for both the offences under section 112 effect of the act was different but known to abetter causing hurt to death punishment for effect caused 113 if abetter is present he is deemed to abet as per section 112 Death imprisonment of offence not committed, no provision for punishment, act done and only hurt caused, 7 years and fine and 14 years and fine and section 114. Now, if offence is not committed and no provision for punishment is there, one fourth of the maximum punishment to be given. If abetter or abetted public servant whose duty to prevent an act, half of the maximum punishment should be given. Abetment to the public in general or by more than 10 persons, then a three years or fine under section 117. In case of concealing or facilitating punishable with death or imprisonment for life, if committed 7 years plus fine, if not committed 3 years plus fine, punishable only with imprisonment, then 1 fourth if committed, 1 eighth if not committed. If he is a public servant, 10 years if committed, half of the punishment if not committed. Abetment of a thing. A person abets the thing, doing of a thing, who first instigates any person to do it that thing, or engages with one or more other persons, or persons in any conspiracy for the doing of that thing. If an act or illegal omission takes place in persons of that conspiracy, and in order to 
the doing of that thing or thirdly intentionally aids by an act or illegal omission the doing of that thing. And the explanations and illustrations the gist I have given as explained. earlier now this is a replica of the provisions which for convenience